spoke with a friend of mine on this issue and I think that it's very important for all of us to remember that God was here before of Matan Torah. Before he gave us the Torah, he was here. Not only that for that knowledge that before that we received the Torah, we were worshipping idols and chasing ourselves and humbling ourselves. Not only for that purpose. Also to understand that God is beyond this world completely, big time. Like, he's out of space. He's out of space. He's, he's not from here. And also us, really, we're not from here. We not belong to this world. It's just, it's a mission. It's a process that we need to go through here in this world for one lifetime or for a few lifetimes, for 50 years or for 70 years, maybe even for 120 years. But the truth is that our soul not belong to this place at all, at all, at all. We're completely foreign in this world. And what does it mean? It means that we're much better than this world. Because this world, as nice as it looks, is literally hell for everyone. Even for the righteous ones that learned how to accept everything with love and with faith and with hope, they also lost their children in the Holocaust. They also had to separate from their families on the way to Auschwitz. So maybe they took it in a different way, in a very inspiring way, in a very heroic way, with, with, with many understandings along the way. Yes, but it was Auschwitz. It was hell. No one get rid of that hell. No one escapes from that hell. Righteous people that don't have enough money to feed their children are going through hell. Even if they are very pure and they know that it's Hashem to see your child hungry or to think that he might be hungry in 20 years from now if you won't be able to supply, it's a nightmare even for a righteous man or a woman. So this world is a world of darkness. Nothing will change it. And also the rabbis that are trying to teach us that we must praise Hashem and to see Hashem, they cannot deny what that is written in the books, that this world is a dark world that is blocking the light of the Creator. It's true, we have a mission. Our mission is to recognize and to find the light of Hashem between the cracks. But the world itself is al Madashika, world of light. And nothing that we're going to do will not erase that fact. This world is dark and it's hard. Maybe after going through that process that might be very hard, complex, whatever, we can achieve a level that we wouldn't achieve without this mission in this world. But it doesn't mean that this world won't be a hard, painful experience to us all. And the reason that I'm saying it is mainly because that many people are finding it too hard to deal with the truth that they are experiencing in life. And they rather to deny the pain and to ignore it and to say no 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 everything is good Baruch Hashem thank you Hashem Kol Chesed Hashem is good Kol Tova and on and it's great you are using verses it's it's better to use verses than than to to curse or, or to swear or to whatever it's good it's better but still to lie to yourself and not to deal with the pain and the sorrow and the trauma and the 
the the inner emotional stress that that is piling with the years is a lie and it's not the will of Hashem. Hashem does not want us to lie to ourselves no matter what we try to achieve with that lie, no matter how painful that truth is, He still wants you to attach yourself to the truth. The main thing that Hashem wants is the truth. And that's why I said that Hashem was here before of Torah and Mitzvot. Because it's true, Torah and Mitzvot is something that we, me, myself, we're obligated to it in 100%. But we also are obligated to understand that Hashem is eternal, that Hashem is beyond, that Hashem was here before of the creation, that we were one with Him before of the creation. It's also a piece of the knowledge that we must hold, that Hashem he loves us, if we're able to follow and to keep all Tariyag Mitzvot, 613 Mitzvot, or if you're falling from few. Hashem is your father if you're the best kid and if you're a failure. And if you failed, it doesn't necessarily say that there is something bad with you. There can be many, many wrong things in the system also. The teachers can be wrong also. The kids in school can be also bad friends, bad influence on you. The speed of life, the colors, the smells can all pull you to different places in a way that you won't be able to stop yourself from failing. And then there's no one to blame. Even on your own failures, sometimes the verse is saying, What do you want from that kid? How he can protect himself from not sinning? If he born in a city, in a town, in a village, in a certain community, in a certain place, that there was no atmosphere for purity, real holiness. I'm not talking about religion. I'm talking about real basics, foundations for living life of faith and growing strong and powerful. If he didn't have those things, even if he grew up in the biggest, strongest Jewish community, it won't feed him from inside to hold on and to grab to it, not to fall and to break to pieces during his life. Life is not easy. And we must deal with that truth with truth. So it is allowed for a person to break once in a while and to fall once in a while and to fail. And there is nothing wrong with that. And to pretend always that we're strong is that if you have the power to show something and, and to be a role model for someone else and you want to show or you have to be strong now, okay, great. But after that month or year will finish, you're also allowed to take a vacation and to, to, tell, to, to, to heal yourself. We're only humans. And it's very important. Many people think that by connecting themselves to a religion, to Judaism, they will do tshuva, they will come breast levels, they will go to Uma and say tikkun aklali, they will start putting tefillin, they will keep Shabbat, I don't know what. Everyone with his dream, he thinks that by doing that, that will ease his pain. It will solve all of his problems. This is why people are dreaming that Mashiach will come, Mashiach will come. You couldn't care less about Mashiach. The only thing that you go through is that the pain is too much for you and you want someone to take it off your back. That's why you want Mashiach to come. Who is Mashiach? You haven't really thought about it. What Mashiach is going to do? What will happen when Mashiach will come? The truth is that more or less you couldn't care less. Just That's a sign for the truth, right? We know it. But we just can't suffer so much. So we're asking, please bring Mashiach now. And we want redemption, we want salvation. We don't know what it's talking about. We, there are people that are ready to give $10,000 to a righteous man that will make a pidyon nefesh, redeem their soul. Okay, take it. What, whatever, just ease my pain. So first of all, I'm telling you, before of looking for solutions, understand that you're suffering and it's okay. And 
everyone are suffering. Every single person that I saw in my life until today is suffering. I haven't seen one that everything went easy for him. I haven't. And if someone will tell me that he found someone, I want to see. I want to see it myself. I'm sure that I can bring him to cry in two minutes. I'm sure. <laughs> Not by just exposing his lie. Every person that I speak with after a couple of minutes, an honest conversation, he starts crying. Every person, including myself. That's why I'm trying not to talk to myself too much. <laughs> Immediately. I have this thing in myself that I'm pulling people to the truth, to their truth, without trying to take them to my place. I just help them to make another step into their inside. And immediately people are crying. And I prayed for it. I, I, I earned it in a way. I asked for Hashem Barak to give me the tool, the power to help people. And he answered my prayer and gave me that power. But by using that and understanding and seeing it, I realized that everybody hurts. Sometimes. <laughs> everybody. Everybody. So first of all, as people that are searching for the truth, we must deal with the real truth and not to fake no religion and no Judaism and no Hasidut and not being righteous and being holy and being Sfaradi and being part of the community and going Daven in that shul. That's all a lie. And it might be a, 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 a great thing that you do, but don't grab to it like that's your success. So you're going to teach us the trick now. Yes, hopefully. <laughs> I'm going to learn it for myself with you <laughs> on the same table with the same delicious fruits. <laughs> the truth is the only thing that can bring the person to happiness. Why? Because the main sorrow that a person has in his life is a result of the fact that he is not loyal and truthful to himself. That's the pain that we're taking and carrying with ourselves. I betrayed myself. I wasn't right. I wasn't good. I lied to him. I lied to her. I lied to myself. I didn't accomplish. I didn't do what I wanted to do. All of those things are making us miserable. Why? Only because we're not dealing with them with truth. If you will stop that crazy train of rebuking yourself and punishing yourself on your lackings, and you will try to make an honest investigation with yourself, a conversation, looking into the depths of your life to the truth, and ask yourself why you gave up on that dream. You hate yourself because you dropped off that dream. Great, you had a dream, you wanted to achieve something, to build something, and you gave up on that. When you were 20, when you were 30, you gave up on that dream. And now you hate yourself for it, for an example. Now, you can blame yourself and hate yourself for that point till the rest of your life. But if you will really go down to the roots of your weaknesses, of why you felt that you don't have the power in those days when you gave up on that dream. What was bothering you so much? Why it was so hard for you? Why you came to that position that you decided to abandon your dream? If you will go and talk to yourself in a friendly way, in a positive way, judge yourself favorably and gonna try to ask yourself really what really happened in those days. Even if your answer will be an answer that you will be ashamed of, like, I was too scared, I was terrified, I was too confused, I didn't know what to do, I was lost. If that will be your answer, you will have the ability to accept it. Why? Because it will be a sincere, honest answer. And you will accept it. If someone will hurt your feeling, and he will come to you and apologize. And you will feel that he is really apologizing from the heart. He realized that he made a mistake. You will forgive him. No matter which crime he crimed against you, you will forgive him because of his honesty. But if you will feel 
that he's showing that he's pretending to apologize, no matter how many flowers or diamonds he's going to give you to forgive him, you won't do it. Why? Because he hasn't accomplish complete tshuva. He didn't came back fully to the truth. But if he will provide the truth, how can the Nazis pay for what they did to us? Money won't pay. Their land, we don't want it. What else can they give? That they're all going to die? Is it going to heal us? No. We don't want them even to die. Kill all their children? We won't be happy. We don't need that. What will, I think, that's my assumption, that's my feeling, that if, I don't know if it's possible, but if there would be a way that they will come to that crazy painful understanding of what that they did to us and really completely going to regret, even though that we lost what that we lost, we will be able to forgive. That's what I think. I'm not sure, but that's my understanding. Because... There is no other solution except of tshuva, except of confessing on the mistake from a real honest heart. That's the only thing that someone in this world can do when he doesn't have anything else to do. And now I'll tell you something that I think that that's a secret of redemption. I think that that is the answer that will fix the world in the end. That Hashem Barach is telling us, Shuvu Elai, Vashuva Elechem. When you will come back to me, I will also come back to you. Okay, we sinned, we messed up, we made some nasty things in our life. We need to come back to Hashem. Great. But Hashem is all good. So why Hashem needs to come back? What does it mean that Hashem needs to come back? To come back, it's to do tshuva. Shuvu elai vashuva elechem. If Hashem Barach is a loving creator, he was always with us, he will always be, so he doesn't need to come back. We're the only one that needs to come back. Why you need to come back if you never left? If I left you and I sinned, I need to come back. And now you're going to accept me. Say, I'm going to accept you. Shuvu elai vani akabel etchem. Come back to me and I'll accept you. Great, wonderful. But there is another aspect. There is that way that Hashem Himself is expressing His thoughts and telling us, when you will complete your tshuva, I will come back to you as well. Means that He also drifted somewhere. That He also went somewhere. He chose to hide Himself from us and on that He regrets and there are many, many verses that are showing that. That Hashem Barach is saying, Oili Shenishbati, I regret on that oath, that decree that I made to destroy the temple, that I minimized the moon, that I brought darkness to the world, that I exiled my children from the table of the Father. And Hashem Barach is saying to us, Haviwa Laika Para, I'm asking from you to bring a sacrifice to atone. On my mistake, every Rosh Chodesh, every first day of the month in the Jewish calendar, Hashem Barach is saying that. I want you to help me to atone on my mistake, to erase my mistake. And we are asking ourselves, how can it be that Hashem Barach made a mistake? An answer for that, I cannot give you. But also to ignore those verses that Hashem Barach is telling us, listen, I also need to come back to you because I was blocking the light from you is not something that we can ignore. Hashem really needs to reveal His loving kindness back again. It's not only our responsibility. When Hashem Barach said to Moshe Rabbeinu, I'm about to destroy them because they sinned, and Moshe Rabbeinu was strong enough to say to Hashem Barach, but you're the one that hide yourself from them. You turn their face away from you. Moshe Rabbeinu was brave and strong enough to stand in front of Hashem Barach and tell him, I'm sorry, you did it. What do you want from them? 
you brought all of the desires and all of the confusions and all of the lusts and all of the judgments on them. You made them lose their faith. You brought foreign women, you brought music, you brought food, you brought everything to distract their thoughts from the purpose. Now what do you want from them? Moshe was strong enough to say that truth even in the face of Hashem. Why? Because he was ready to die for the truth. And the truth must be said. We must say the truth. We must be honest with ourselves. If you feel that the pain that you're going through is too much for you to handle, you must have the ability to say it. It's too much for me to handle. I'm sorry. You cannot play no game and lie to yourself and lie to the Creator. Not even for his own sake, not even for his own honor. If you really honor your parents, so you will tell them, listen, something is wrong in the house. I respect you, but something is wrong. It will be an act of respect that you respect your parents to talk to them with all the honor and with the most polite words that you will be able to choose, but you will express your sorrow. You will say, I feel lost. I feel confused. I feel that you're d dropping me, that you're ignoring me. And we must have that ability. Must have that ability. The honesty to come to Hashem Barach and to tell Him the truth. And not to be afraid to say it. Even if you're not so righteous, even if you're not so true, even if you're not the best one in the world, so what? But Hashem made you to be who that you are, and you must be honest in that place. You must be truthful to the truth that you recognize and you find inside of yourself. Now, let's say that one person really hurt your feelings, and he really destroyed you in a way, and you're upset with him, you're angry, and now he's coming. And he's apologizing. In the beginning, you say, listen, enough is enough. I don't want to hear you. You did, you caused enough damage. But if you will see that that person starts crying, he really cares, he really suddenly have a heart, he feels the sorrow of his mistake. So you will tell him, okay, listen, whatever it was, drop it, let's move on. And he's keep on crying. And he's telling you, no, but listen, I want to I wanna, I wanna do something good for you. I'm sorry. I realized how bad I was. What that I did for you was horrible. I cannot forgive myself. Please, give me a chance. Let me do something for you. Something. Please, I'm begging. And you will see that that person is, is not backing off and is not harassing you. He doesn't compose. On, he's just being honest. He wants to, 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 to fix what that he ruined. In the end, you will forgive him completely, right? The answer is yes. And now, let's say that he will continue apologizing. You will start feeling bad with yourself on being hard on him in the first place. You will say to yourself, why I was so angry at him? Poor guy, he was just a mistake, he was just wrong, he, conf he was confused, he did what he did. Why I need to be so strict? Why I need to always fight on my honor? Just Why, why I need to... You will start to feel bad with yourself. That is the secret of redemption. That when we will come back to Hashem, in a certain moment our tshuva will be so complete that Hashem will start feeling bad about Himself abandoning us and sending us to the 2,000 and more years of dark exile and He will do tshuva and He will come back and He will start apologizing to us on letting us be alone and being afraid at nights and feeling so lost and suffering from poverty and our love will come back to his heart in a way that he will regret on the sorrow that he, so to speak, caused to us by being so righteous and right and always so perfect and divine and beyond this world. Because Hashem 
we cannot say that he's human but we are like him and he also got the heart and he also got emotions and like that we are human and human means divine with a godly soul he got that soul as well so he feels and he understands and he admits when he feels because Moshe Rabbeinu learned his humility from Hashem. Hashem is much more humble than we can imagine. There will never gonna be no explanation on the Holocaust. Who wants to hear the explanation? Who cares about the explanation? What in the world can answer the sorrow of the loss that we experience? And we don't have to take such a radical example like the Holocaust. Years of struggling, finding happiness in life, dealing with, with family members that cannot understand you, cannot appreciate you, finding, looking for a way to live, to find money, to, to survive in life, dealing with school systems. Every single detail in life becomes so hard. And who can pay for that? When you're going to be 70 and you're going to retire, when you won't have the power to enjoy life anymore like you wanted when you were 20, that will be the way to, 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 to give you the reward. The reward is not in this world and will never going to be in this world. This is why the reward will always be only in the spiritual dimension or in the world to come or in your inner understanding of living your life with truth. And then when you will live your life with truth, even if you will fail, you won't feel the sorrow because you will know, I did the best that I could. And you will feel completion. You will feel okay with yourself. When you were okay, when you were right, when you were good and something fell off your hand, you don't feel regret. You don't feel that you did something wrong. You don't blame yourself on that. You feel okay with that because you did the best that you could. So if we will just attach ourselves to the inner truth of our being, no matter how painful it will be, no matter how hard it will be for us to deal with it, with those fears, with that stress, if we will just going to do that, we will attach ourselves to the Creator. Because he's close to everyone that calls him with truth. And when you say the truth, you must say the real truth. Even if your truth will be to say to Hashem, I'm a thief and a liar and that's my truth. That will bring you closer to Hashem. Much more than if you're going to try to be righteous now and going to try to play the game and give your maiser and give your charity. And inside you know that you're a thief. You hate yourself and you won't find peace and quiet and happiness as long as you're lying to yourself, no matter how amazing and inspiring your lies will be. And how many people will buy those lies? You will die as a liar. You're going to know I'm a liar. I'm a pathetic liar. I cheated. I lied. You will know it. On your deathbed, you will know it. So why to come to that place? It's much better to admit on the truth as painful as it's going to be. And it doesn't mean that you need to go and tell everyone what that you did and to expose yourself in public. No. Not everyone punished like me that they need to do tshuva in public, live on Facebook, don't have time to do the one hour it would do it, so they have to express themselves live on Facebook. Not everyone got that punishment. You can have your own punishment. You can confess in front of the mirror. You can talk to Hashem Barach in the hidden room under the blanket. You can do your tshuva. Not everyone needs to do tshuva in public. There is a, a tshuva in public, it's for a, a worse level of sinners. If a person just stole money from you, he needs to come and to confess to you and to give you the money back. But if a person stolen money from the community, from 200 families, a tshuva alone won't, won't be enough. He needs to come, and like that he knew how to, to steal from everyone, now he needs to know, to learn how to apologize to everyone. So that's kind of my life story in a, in a minute. I need to do tshuva in front of thousands of people. That's my tikkun.
I'm accepting it. You won't deny that I'm trying to do the best that I can. My friends will, uh, will, uh, will testify on me that I'm doing the best that I can. And you should do the best that you can as well. And just really to be honest with yourself. The truth is that we're afraid of things and those things are not really scary. And the proof for that is that life brought us to deal with many difficulties and we, we passed those, those challenges even if we were terrified to deal with them. But in the end, after the fact, you look at the past and you say, okay, I made it, I did it, it was okay. It was not as scary. The fear itself is causing us to be afraid from it. We're afraid from the fear and not from the challenge. Every challenge you can pass. Because if life will bring you to that challenge, you will pass it. Somehow you're going to pass it with one leg, with one eye in the end. You're going to pass it. With one kidney, you're going to pass it. it, it you're going to survive. And even if you're going to die, so you died while fighting for the truth, doing the best thing. You made it. You, at least you died and with, with a noble cause, with a good reason, died on Kiddush Hashem. You, you're okay. You lived your life. What more than that can you do? But people are falling to fears and being paralyzed, not able to function and not to have no faith and not to breathe because of the fear itself and not because of the challenge. So when a fear is coming to attack you, you must put it in proportion, in the right place. I am just afraid now. I'm not in a dangerous situation, I'm just terrified now. Yes, there is a train, but I can deal with it. Yes, there is a threat, but I can deal with it. The fact that I'm terrified, that's my main enemy. So what you should do against your fear, fight with your fear. And everyone will fight in a different way. And everyone will fight the way, will find the way to fight in his own way. To be able in the end of his life to say, I did it my way. <laughs> and to be happy with what that he did. And to be proud of himself on being loyal, on being who that he was, truthful to his truth, to the truth that he achieved to the real things that he felt that were important to live for and to die for. And against the fears we must fight like they're the worst enemy that we have. Because they are draining our power. They're destroying our life. Taking away the happiness of life and the satisfaction. You can sit in your house and being worried for years on years with no logic reason. Afraid to talk to people, afraid to go to the supermarket, afraid to tell your husband, afraid to answer your children, afraid to answer your phone, afraid to, to open the mail, afraid to, I don't know, to go to the swimming pool, to go to the sea, afraid to live, afraid to be righteous, afraid to, to, to keep Shabbat. And it's all a game of Yetzirah. It's all a trick of the evil inclination to paralyze you. And he found the best way for one person. He's grabbing him in Parnassah, in money issues. One, he's grabbing him in relationship. One, he's grabbing him with health issues and paralyzing him completely. That's it. He found a way. He, he got you. And it's like an elephant or a camel that they're not wise enough to understand that it's a mice that is pulling them from the nose and taking them to some other place. They're just, oh, he's taking me. And they're going after their fears. No, no, but he's telling me, no, but I must, I must cook, I must fix, I must do, I must work, I must go to the doctor. No, no, no. Fight your fears and be brave to be who that you are. Say, I'm not cooking anymore. What's going to happen? He's going to slap you? Will it be the first time? And if it will be the first time, what's going to happen? You know, he's not going to eat. You're not going to eat. Like it, was the, it would be the first time you haven't ate supper in your life. What? You will go to sleep crying. Like it was the first time you went go crying. 
If that hug in the middle of the night is a fake hug, so it's better to sleep alone. And we're not saying for good. The honesty and the truth can bring you only to good places. Even if it is bringing you to challenge and to deal with things that are very painful for you. And waking up memories from a past that you rather to forget. But lies... And lack of honesty will never going to bring you to no kind of success. Because you're going to hate yourself on your success. Because you will know that it's only a fake success and not a real success. Because you were not truthful. Because you were not honest. And your conscience won't leave you alone. Because God made us like Him that inside of us there is that like software, spiritual software, we cannot stand lies. We cannot. We cannot live with lie. Dover shkarim lo ikon leneged enai. Hashem is saying, and a person that is lying cannot stand in front of me. And you have Hashem inside of you. Basuli mikdash v'shachanti betocham. He lives inside of us. He is our soul. Chelek eloka mimal. Part of heaven inside of us, installed inside of us, lives inside of you. So lies are always coming in and creating contradictions, fights. And that's why you suffer. Because you lie to yourself. And maybe you got used to those lies. And that's maybe why you think to unsubscribe yourself from my channel. But I suggest to fight with your lies and not to push unsubscribe. Just call your friends, share that video, and tell them all to subscribe. And save, save lives of people. Because only the truth will set us free. Only. Thank you. Because our prison is inside. It's not the house that is trapping you. It's not your job that is trapping you. It's not your husband, not your wife, not your children, not your rabbi, not your community. It's none of those things. You can be a sparrow and live between the houses, live in the streets and to be happy. If your soul is free, you're free. There are people that are able to experience freedom and that your life for them will be a complete redemption and you want to die. Why you want to die? Because you suffer from inside. Because you've been turned off from inside. So you need to let that flame, your soul, that receives life only from good things, only from truth, only from love, only from honor, only from peace, only from respect, only from good midot, from good attributes, only from kindness, only from grace. And you must let it shine. You must let your soul shine. So for that you need to be honest and to let your soul express itself. You must go with your dreams. And if you lost something, at least you need to be honest with yourself and to say, I don't want to lose the next. At least not to lose more. And to be honest with yourself and to go all the way with that because Hashem wants it. Even if for your rabbi it will be hard to accept. Hashem wants your truth. He wants your heart. And if in your heart now you feel like singing, if in your heart now you feel like traveling, if in your heart now you feel like you must go and swim or whatever, or just to rest another hour, that's what you need to do. And Hashem will appreciate it much, much more than if you're going to fake being so observant and from and, and, and fake from birth. From from birth. We're not allowed to fake our Judaism, our connection to Hashem. Hashem doesn't want liars. Not even rabbis that are best liars in the world. Hashem don't want that. Hashem don't want liars. He doesn't want you to be a, a liar, righteous man. He wants you to be honest, simple, honest person is so much greater than the biggest famous liar in the world. Like, okay, so he's lying to everyone, showing everyone that he's righteous and he knows, his wife knows exactly who he is. So 
What's the benefit? What's the use of being such a perfect liar? Okay, so you got all the honor in this world and you're going to be so ashamed in the world to come that it's crazy. It's so crazy. So you're going to deny the truth so well in this world and you're going to pretend to be so pure and righteous, such a going, such a, a, a wise person. Everything, you're going to act generous and you're going to do whatever, you're always going to take care of people. And your wife, she can't stand your smell. Your wife, she hates you, she despites you. And she will also going to be there in Judgment Day when everyone will praise you. She will say, I'd rather to not, to, not to say my opinion. They will force her to talk. They will force her to talk. Sof davar hakol nishma. In the end of this world, everything will be heard. Everything will be heard. The things that you were hiding consistently one day after the other, working so hard to hide them, to uncover, to cover them, to block them, to seal them, that no one will feel, that no one will know. It's not going to work for me and it's not going to work for you. And it's not going to work for the chief rabbi and to the most famous righteous men of the generation. Hashem's light will expose it all. The truth will stand up and will say itself. The verse is saying that the person need to be careful from his own soul that will testify on him in Judgment Day. Like, your soul will say it. You, you will say, no, please. And she will tell it all until the last detail. And also he thought and also so she felt and she wanted. and she, Everything will be revealed. We cannot hide the truth. The truth got that nature that it floats, that it rises, that it comes above the surface. So years of denial, of, 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 of hiding it and trying to destroy it and to erase it won't do no good. In the end, you will stand naked in front of the truth and it will expose you. And you will have to admit, they're not going to ask you. Like, I saw you, Hashem will say. Like, I heard, I heard you. There is no discussion. There is no, we're not arguing. That was the truth and you will be too ashamed to answer. That's why people forget their names in Judgment Day, because they were denying the truth. They denied who they really were, so they forget who they really were. So we're not supposed to let ourselves go to that place. So we must confront our fears and admit at least, first step, in front of ourselves, who we really are. And not to be afraid of your lackings, because like I said in the beginning, it doesn't mean now execute yourself on your sins. It means completely the opposite. Go and make, make the investigation all the way till the end. And okay, I sinned. Okay, I messed up big time. I made a horrible thing. Let's see why I did it. Why I failed. Why me, myself, Dror Moshe Ben Emanuela, why I messed up so badly. What was my reason? Let's check. Let's give me a chance to express myself. Maybe I was weak. Maybe I was terrified. Maybe I felt all alone. Maybe I felt I don't have no one. Maybe I, were, I, 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 I yearned for love. Maybe I was, I was so lost and confused. If from that point of honesty you will say to Hashem, I'm sorry, I need your help, heal me. He will answer your prayer and will heal you. And if you will apologize all the way, He will tell you, listen, I made you fail. It wasn't really your fault. You couldn't resist those traps that I put for you. That will be the tshuva of Hashem in the end of our life story. If you will complete your tshuva, but for that you need to be ready to be exposed, to be turned, torn to pieces, to be crushed to dust. If that's the truth, if I deserve punishment, I want it. I don't want to lie anymore. And when you will do it, Hashem will come to you and will tell you, you don't need to suffer. 
I was looking only for that honesty. The truth is that I did it to you, that it was me. I was the one that was hiding my face from you. I was hiding the love from you that you will have to look for love in foreign places. I was hiding the satisfaction, the pleasure from you that you had such bitter and gray life that you had to go and look for pleasure in foreign places. Hashem will open His heart in front of us, but only after we will finish opening our heart to Him. You got it? There is only one way to achieve all of that great thing. But after I said that, so I came up with a few ideas. So, you want to hear all of them or only the first? So, the first is the conversation with Hashem. You must have a conversation with yourself, with your soul, with your Creator. An honest, friendly conversation on a daily basis. You must start, start that job. Start exposing yourself between you and yourself. Start be your friend. Help yourself to go out from your own darkness, from those places that you buried yourself in. That's the answer. Second is, and that's why it came up second, is that it's impossible for you to take that advice and to succeed. Just like that, okay, oh, thank you, Rav, and that's it, I'll see you in 30 years, happy and shiny. No, it won't work. So you must attach yourself to me. I'm sorry. If you heard it for me, it means that I can supply it to you. I'm being honest with it. You never heard it from no one else, say the truth, right? You heard it from someone else? You heard it from someone else? You, you. You, you, you did? You heard it from someone else? You? Never. You? You? Never. Never. <laughs> you? You heard it from someone else? No. No. You did? Oh, I'm not going to say no. <laughs> you? You? Okay. So, I don't need anything from you. I love you. And I'm here to give to you. So just accept it that you're receiving from me and take it. And I'm just offering myself to you. Just keep on watching those amazing videos and keep on following that amazing advice and go search and find yourself. That's what I'm offering you. That's it. That's what I'm asking from you. To find more power, to keep on searching and finding your heart inside of yourself. And if I'm able to give it to you, so take it. That's what I'm asking. Just give me a hand and we'll go to a new place, to a wonderful place, to complete redemption, uh, individual redemption, complete salvation of the individuals, that everyone will find his inner happiness, his inner satisfaction, completion, happiness from inside. Okay? Thank you. Hazakimbal. <laughs> This world, in this period of time, we have a mission. What's the mission? The mission is only not to forget the Creator, to remember that it's all He, never to fall in the trap of all of those coverings, of all of those husks.